So are you someone who finds Elden Ring or any of the other Dark Souls games a complete duck poop? You die and die and you don't see any progress. It feels like you're stuck in an endless cycle of getting your butt handed to you. Well, don't worry. You're not alone in this struggle. We've all been there, smashing our controllers in frustration. If you love fantasy games like The Witcher or Elder Scrolls and want to give Elden Ring a try but you're worried it'll be more of a rage fest than a fun adventure, you're in the right place. We've got tips to help you conquer those brutal bosses and turn your Elden Ring experience from duck poop into pure gold. So buckle up, grab your controller and let's dive into the chaos together. The main problem is that you simply don't understand the combat system, specifically the dodge mechanic. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be dodging attacks like a pro and turning those frustrating deaths into glorious victories. Let's break down how to master the dodge and finally make some real progress in the Elden Ring. I've seen plenty of people and friends who tried the game and they said the game is unresponsive, that the controls are not responding when they try to dodge an attack and they keep dying again and again making the game really frustrating when they know they pressed a button, but they still die. Of course, they can get to that conclusion if they don't really understand how the mechanics work, as the game doesn't really explain this step and lets you discover it. For some players who are used to a bit more guidance, Elden Ring can feel like hitting an insurmountable obstacle, like a big wall that they can't climb or even understand. I hope that this video will give you an insight on how the game really works, and it will make your experience more fun and enjoyable than a more masochistic type of experience. As a start and a solution is to play defensive and use a shield. Shield can block all attacks, but you will still take some amount of damage and it's very stamina drain, meaning you'll have to invest a lot into your stamina. If you want to play any other way, any other classes, then you'll have to learn the most used mechanic in the entire game, the dodge mechanic. I'll get back to the shield, but first, let's get you familiar with how the dodge mechanic works. When you press the button to dodge, you will step backwards. This is a small step and not a very efficient way to avoid damage, especially if you are a beginner. But if when you press the dodge button and you also press to move in any direction, your character will start to roll on the ground in that direction, avoiding damage. This triggers the iframe, or the invincibility second. The problem now, and funny enough that I don't see anyone else explaining how this mechanic really works, is probably because most of the people find this intuitive and natural to do. And what I'm talking about is the animation of the dodge. When you dodge, you are supposed to be invincible and you should not take any damage, or at least that is how you think it should be. But you keep getting hit again and again. That is because when you dodge, the character does a specific animation of rolling on the ground and back up. And in that animation, the moment of invincibility is right in the middle of it. When you dodge roll and you see the animation of your character jumping on the ground and up, during the first and last stages of that animation, you are not invincible, and so you will most definitely get hit in those seconds. That is why you hear everyone saying that you have to learn the movements of the boss, so you can press the dodge roll button a second before the boss starts to swing his attack at you. And when he swings his weapon, your dodge roll animation should happen exactly when the attack should have hit you. The animation should be in the middle of that roll giving you that invincibility frame. One second early or later and you will get hit. This is something that many players know intuitively and find it natural. And when they play, they make it look easy and simple. New players think that if they press the button exactly when the enemy swings at them, their character should also move instantly and dodge it. But it doesn't, and they get hit. This is why Dark Souls games are considered to be hard and skill-based. Players who understand this mechanic and learn how to read and memorize the movements of a boss can easily beat the game. And in some cases, they get so good at it that they can beat the entire game without being hit once. There are a few other things that can impact the dodge roll, and that is the weight of your character. If you are equipping heavy armor and weapons, your weight will increase making you more heavy, and so your dodge rolls will become slower. The lighter you are, the faster your dodge roll will be. You can find this stat in the character menu, and putting points into your endurance can increase the weight capacity. You will probably see a lot of players playing naked, as removing their armor makes them lighter and faster. Another thing that can influence your dodge rolls and the combat itself is the attack animation. 
If, for example, you swing your sword, the swinging also has an animation. And if you press the dodge button during your swing, you will not dodge until you finish the attack animation. This is why a lot of players, even good players if they are hit, they will say that they were too greedy by attacking too many times before dodging away. The insight is that you have to familiarize and read the enemy's movements in order to stop your attack in time so you can dodge away. Some enemies are designed so they intentionally delay their attacks and trick you into pressing the buttons to dodge roll too early. So keep an eye out for those movements. Don't get frustrated each time you die but try to stay calm and learn with each encounter. Try to memorize the pattern when the enemy starts to lift its hands, hold it, and when he begins to descend its attack upon you. The more you start to pay attention to his body's movements, the faster you will get accustomed to his attacks and easily defeat him. Even if you go for a mage build who is very good at range attacks, you will still have to use the dodge rolls in order to survive. Now, I started the video by mentioning the shield. I think for new players, the shield is the easiest way to beat this game. It does not require you to perfectly time your block. You can just press and hold the shield and constantly block attacks. The main stat you should be looking for when using a shield is the guard boost, as that is the thing that can make you block longer and more efficiently. When the enemy attacks and you block it with the shield, it will consume your stamina and the better the guard boost, the longer you can last. Some bosses have such a strong attack that even when blocking it, can immediately consume all of your stamina and you will be left wide open to an attack. So increasing your stamina and having a good shield with a good guard boost can make your gameplay much easier. Also, while using the shield, you cannot attack and block at the same time. However, using a spear or a piercing weapon, you can attack and guard at the same time until your stamina runs out. So this is also something to keep in mind. Now, there are a lot more things that can add up to the mechanics, but if as a new player you can understand this, you have a chance at progressing throughout the game. Don't get me wrong, this game's difficulty is no joke. You'll need patience and perseverance, but once you get the hang of it, the sense of accomplishment is unbeatable. Also, it's very important to upgrade your weapons. It's like swapping a wooden stick for a lightsaber. Suddenly, you're slicing through enemies like butter and the game feels way more satisfying. Don't skimp on this step if you want to see those big damage numbers. And that's it. Use this knowledge wisely, resist the urge to spam the attack button, instead play it cool and observe. Watch the enemy's moves so you can time your dodges perfectly. It's all about patience and precision. And do yourself a favor and invest in Vigor. It's like carrying a backup battery for your phone. More health gives you that extra edge to survive more attacks and stay in the fight longer. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.